Hey everybody, um, in this video I wanted to show you guys how to make your very own polymer clay runes. Um, just like these ones here. Uh, I'm making a set of 25 um, and I'm using this book as reference for just the different runes and how they're shaped and everything. Um, you could just as easily do this with the Tolkien runes um, from the Lord of the Rings books. These are perfect both for um, as an accessory to if you're into like tarot and rune casting and different stuff like that or if you wanted to put a little hole into them and make them into a charm or if you wanted to like use them in scrapbooking. I mean the possibilities for this are endless. Um, but since I'm making a lot of these, I wanted to show you guys the process that I went through to kind of streamline that, for lack of a better term, manufacturing process. And so what I did was I started with, um, this is just plain, very inexpensive, basic Sculpey. And I rolled it out on the thickest setting and I just used a stylus, um, like a ballpoint tool to basically write in all of those different runes. And then I baked it and I went through with the Dremel tool. And that's the kind of point that it had on it. Just a little engraving, very delicate. And I deepened out all of the, um, all of the runes to give them more of an imprint. And then I took little, um, <laughs> it was a process like, and it took, literally all day um but so now I have a negative um and so I took just a pinch of clay and I smushed it onto where's this one at just smushed right in to make the imprint so now I can take this and I made and I just used scrap clay um I made all 24 because the 25th rune in most rune sets is just a blank one. So we didn't have to make a stamp for that. Um, but yeah, so I have all the different runes now. And you don't have to be making runes. You could be doing um, uh, the friend that I had here with me, uh, Hidden Thicket. If I can remember to ever link to their YouTube, I'll do that. <laughs> but they did like animal paws and like tracks and stuff. Um, so that's something that you could do, but this is just, it's a great way to be able to do the work once on a design and make your own stamps. So I made all of those. And so, um, now the process of actually making the, uh, the completed final rune. Um, I have just some plain black clay here, pretty well conditioned. I'm going to put it through one more time on the pasta machine on the thickest setting. just like so. I have a mister of water here. Just getting a little bit of water on the surface. That way my um, these things don't stick to the clay. And then I also have a little cutter. A little clay cutter. Um, mm, let's see if I can't bring the camera down just a hair so you can see better what's going on here. That didn't really help, does it? Okay, but um, so I have my clay cutter and I'm going to go through and just pick out different runes and smush and pull away. So now you can see that was one rune. I'm going to do a bunch of them just as quick as I can. And to keep from duplicating, I don't put them back into the bowl until I've done all of them. And as I just smush, I'm keeping them equidistant enough from each other that I can cut them out with the uh, clay cutter. Smush, just like so. <laughs> so this really does, um, it's a lot easier this way. And also, you could go through if you're doing like a journal cover or something like that and, and just use these little textured stamps that you've made to do whatever you want. Like, I mean, you could carve out like Celtic knotwork or like leaves or a texture. You can make your own texture pieces and make them bigger, bigger. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do the full set here, but I'm going to do 
a sheet just to give you a realistic idea of how much time this does take. Smoosh. <laughs> and so I'm just going to keep going. Just a couple more. And some of them you can see I went through with the Dremel tool and added some texturing in there. Um, but I sell these runes for like $5 for a set of them. So, um, for like, granted that's really basic. Like that's the baseline that I start at. But, um, I didn't want to put in all that texturing because some folks might not like it. And then I do have this polymer clay tool, the, or not polymer clay, um, leather working tool that I use. You can see the little, the bit of texturing there. Maybe. I don't know. It make, does like this really nice kind of texture but you can make this with polymer clay that way you don't have to buy the tool but the polymer clay I found does not translate as well into leather working as leather working tools translate into polymer clay so now you can see here these are all the different runes that I've smushed into the clay and I'm gonna go through with my clay cutter and I'm doing just a light imprint first and then um, to test where the spot is because I do want them to be as centered up as possible. Smoosh. And then smoosh. Oh, that one wasn't very centered. And the nice thing about it too is you can just um, refine the rune that you messed up on if you mess up. Um, and just scrap it and do another one. I mean, so far you haven't done anything to the clay that can't just be reworked back out. So I'm gonna do just these four to give you a really good idea. Okay, um, I have a craft knife somewhere, maybe. Oh. I know I cleaned my craft room. I've lost it. It's gone. Um, but here's some other thing I could use, maybe. Yes. So you can use a craft knife or something sharp, <laughs> like just a pocket knife or something. I'm using a clay working tool and separating the um, clay that I've worked with already, just cutting a line through it. I'm going to peel that off. Now this, I can recondition up back into a solid sheet and use to finish off the set or use for a different project. Choo -choo. So now, you can see there, the different runes. Sorry about the train. And I'm gonna go through and do the edging on these um, with this texturing tool. And you could do this with a stylus. You could do this with if you found a cool stick or something. Like, a, don't ever hesitate to experiment with different things that you have just laying around that might leave like really cool textures on your work. I want to do this one, then I'm going to show you the contrast between... If you can see there. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see the texturing around the edges, and then this one doesn't have the texturing yet. It'll really show up once we do the, um, pearlettes, or you could use eyeshadow. Or you could do a paint wash, where you take some acrylic paint, um, and water it down, and then just paint over it with that, and the acrylic will settle into all the little nooks and crannies, and that's a really good way of getting, like, a contrasting um color but i do that after baking um just because some acrylic paints can like darken um i had found not all of them but maybe it was just the ones that i had were like old or cheap or something um so i'm gonna be using pearlex but i'm gonna do it in green because i already did a purple set and i want to do all the colors so i get my pearlex from hobby lobby it's typically 4.99 but i don't buy anything from them unless i've got like a 40 percent off coupon or it's on sale um and i have not used this one yet it's a new bottle careful don't get it in your lungs <laughs> no in all seriousness though like don't shake this up and breathe it i should be wearing a respirator but i don't 
because I'm a bad person. So I'm just taking the scrap off of the uh, off the cat off the, the little part that I just pulled off the seal. So I'm just gonna take my finger and get some on my finger like this, and then I'm actually going to just rub it onto the surface of the clay. And I'm being careful to not press down because I don't want to get it into all the little nooks and crannies. I just want to get the sticky uppy part. Somebody told me what it's called because it's not sticky uppy. Like that's the technical terminology. Um, but I have promptly forgotten. And you can also take a square of tissue. You can see on this one. There was still some water on the surface, so some of the pigment got down into the room, and I really wanted some contrast. So I'm going to use some toilet paper, because I'm fancy, um, to remove the moisture. And now I'm just using the ball stylus end of this modeling tool to kind of clean out and accentuate the inside of that rune. And so there you can kind of see it has a nice shiny green tinge to it. It's kind of subtle, but it's there. And it's a lot, you see it better in person too. But um, you would just repeat that whole process for your whole room set. Um, stampede. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful to y'all. If you have any questions, ideas, or comments. Oh, wait, we're not done yet. Okay, um, you would do all of them. Uh, and normally, um, I just leave them on the block and bake it. Like, this is a ceramic tile from Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, I leave it on the tile. I bake it at 275 for about 15 minutes. Like, you don't really need to do much longer than that. But follow the directions on your clay packaging, because different brands sometimes take different, um, temperatures. Uh... Oh, I was so pleased with how they came out. But yeah, and I just bake them, and then I pop them off, and then whenever you get done, you can leave them unglazed, which this is what an unglazed one looks like. Or you can go through with Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, and you can give it a nice little shiny finish. Now these ones I did on a black and copper swirl, like kind of marbled. That's the back side. But um, yeah, so that's how it came out. So now I get to say bye. <laughs> um, I do hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial or found it helpful. I'd love to hear your ideas of different projects that a person could do with this um, technique. If you have any questions or comments or anything, y'all know I love talking to you. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I do a fairy house giveaway on Patreon. And I'm really excited because at the time of recording, it is February. And February's Home for the Gnome List is by far probably my favorite one so far. Now I sculpt these from polymer clay and use some different metal tidbits and stuff, but if you would like to support my free tutorials as well as put your name in the hat to win a one-of-a-kind hand-sculpted home for the gnomeless, um, please check out Patreon. There's a link down in the comment area where you can go and for pledging just a dollar, you become a contender for winning um, this cool little fairy house. And we're really close at the time of filming. Um, we're really close to hitting our first mile marker goal, which once we hit that goal, um, I'll actually up it to two giveaways a month. So that's even more incentive. <laughs> but, uh, okay, bye for reals this time. I love y'all. Have fun. Happy crafting. <laughs>